Good morning. It is quarter to nine here and we are, well, our day has been going for quite a while here, but vlog time, it's just beginning. Um, first, let me just say I'm Jennifer. This is A Country Life and I just want to welcome all of the new subscribers here. Uh, I think my analytics, I checked last night and I feel like it said something around 2,000 subscribers are new in just the cool. last month alone, like throughout April. Maybe not quite 2,000, maybe 1,800. I don't remember the number, but anyway, welcome to all of you. It's so nice to have you here. I get comments and I get emails from people uh, just kind of sharing like their experience or what it is that watching my channel has kind of done for them, whether it be help them to feel like not so crazy amidst um, family life or to encourage them to cook more or whatever it might be. Mm. I really do enjoy receiving those emails. And if you... And I can't see. Yep, you can't see. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. That's Joe in the background. He's starting to work on his schoolwork, doing a little copy work right now. But probably one of the best ways that you can uh, help me out here at A Country Life is to share my channel with others. So if you know other people who are interested in this type of content, that really, really does help me out to um, just kind of share it and let other people know that I'm here and willing to help out and encourage people to cook and to live family life the best they can. Okay, let's talk about today. So today, it is Monday. Oh, it is May the 4th. <laughs> I'm not a Star Wars fan, but I have to say it. May the 4th be with you, right? Okay, oh, and Joe wants to be in the camera, so let's talk this way. Today, we're going to do schoolwork. Like I said, it's about quarter to nine here. That means that we're 15 minutes late in starting our normal school day. Okay, yes, Joe. down. Oh, you, <laughs> he wants the camera to sit down and watch him do school so that he can make funny faces in front of it when I walk away. <laughs> so anyway, um, today what we have going, we have to do school. I'm going to do school with Joseph, Peter, and Maria, and we are going to do school hard for the next hour and 10 minutes. And then I'm going to switch to Sam and we're going to do algebra. Um, and from there, I think as soon, probably in that little switchover spot, I'm going to have to get some laundry going because I have not done laundry in a while. Joe collected it. I like to show you my pile. Let's go look. I see. That's why Sam was sneaking out with clothes before because he decided to <laughs> commandeer the washing machine. You're supposed to do that on Saturdays. I didn't have enough clothes on Saturday to do a load. Oh, okay. Well, here's my two loads that need to be folded. Those have been there, I don't even know, it's embarrassing, like four or five days. But um, those need to be folded. It looks like I can't do laundry till Sam is done. All of that up there I have to put away at some point. And then Joe collected laundry. And so here is the pile that he collected this morning. And there is the laundry that has to be um, that has to be washed. That's already been collected other days. So there you have it. I've aired my dirty laundry and some clean laundry to you guys as well today. Come so here. I do have to work on that. And then um, Warren on the marsh today, he is actually um, doing what they're calling cutting vines because cranberries are actually a perennial and they root from their vine. Oh, so basically what you do is you cut vines you. when they're still dormant you. and then those you, you push those vines into the ground and I'll show that in like three weeks when that happens <laughs> but you push the vines into the ground and when they make like a little like if you have a flat vine like this right and then you push it in the ground and you. two pieces come up and the one little piece is kind of down in there what happens is that actually starts to root. So they don't start them from seed or anything like that so that's what he's doing. He is cutting vines. So I'm hoping that I can get down there and show you a little bit of that as well. Um, that just means that we have to hurry up with school because I don't know how long that's going to take him. As soon as I got Peter and Maria set with doing 
uh, like their seat work and everything and I set a timer so that they don't just kind of get carried away <laughs> and start you know losing track of time I switched over laundry hi Joe Joe's back here listening to Aladdin music we gotta stop this buddy I don't think that was Aladdin this time was it was that the princess one okay let's go do reading so Joe is over here just playing He's got Woody and Buzz. Um, and Buzz. Right, let's go do our reading, okay? Come on, bud. Come on! I know. I know. I'm pulling you away from the computer, huh? Come on. Come on. Sit. So Joe's going to work on reading from this Journeys book here. This, you know, this is just like a typical public school, like reading curriculum. I don't use all of it, but we at all because I really like all about reading the best for like the teaching reading part of it. But I did run across these. I think I went to like a free um, school book giveaway thing a couple years ago and ran across these and they've really been really, really good. Maria really likes these and I just kind of keep ordering them used from, um, from uh, Amazon and yeah. We've just been using these as just kind of like a reader along with the All About Reading books and along with Bob books. And it's just always good, I think, to have a big variety of books that um, young readers and early readers can read. So Joe has decided to cover himself up because he thinks if he covers himself up, I'm not going to see him. But I saw him anyway. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think about this one? Which story do you want to read today? <laughs> you want to read Dan and Nan? Dan and Nan? He's not going to answer me, huh? All right. Oh, or do you want to read this one? Can it fit? Did you want to read Can it fit? Just, just wait. Just wait. Hmm, which one are you going to read? Just wait, no. I think you're turning too many pages and we're missing the first. Here we go. How about this one? Do you want to read Max Fox and Lon Ox? All right, this is going to take us a while, so we'll be back. Oh, Peter's trying to keep it hidden. So now the kids are going to draw some pictures. This is kind of what I was thinking, is that they would draw something that says, A Hug for Grandma. This is my drawing of me today. <laughs> so anyway, I was hoping that they would come up with something like that, where they would draw themselves and what they look like today. And we'll send these on, our, on their way. Joe, we're going to have to help you with that, aren't we? Maria, maybe you could help Joe draw <gasps> his first, and then you would get some practice. I draw the same thing that I would draw. You want to try that? Help Dad or help Joe first? Okay. Joe. Sam and I are going to go do algebra now while they work on their pictures. Our bathroom really needed a good wipe down. I didn't take time to do the tub and the shower surround, but I did want to do the toilet and the sink and the floor. And so I just get started by uh, using this Dollar Tree, the works, spraying down the toilet. And uh, I let that soak for a little while while I use Clorox wipes. Actually, they're just the Aldi wipes, <laughs> which are hard to come by, but I had those way uh, before the pandemic. So I just wiped down the rim, the bowl, uh, the floor, just kind of all around while I let that soak. And then I come back and do a good scrubbing of the inside of the toilet and kind of the little section where it goes down because, man, can that build up some funk fast. <laughs> so just took care of that. And then it was time to move to the sink and I hose everything down, let it sit for just a couple of minutes as I go about doing a couple other things. I come back and wipe everything down. I usually use the hand towel that was out and then I wipe everything down with that, throw that in the wash, and put out a fresh hand towel. And next up, I have to take care of the floor. I want to do a quick sweeping of the floor, and then I'm going to come back through with my spray mop and just give it a little once over. All right, it is 10 after 11. I did a whole lot of school, I guess, with the little kids. I was really surprised. Joseph doesn't always want to read, but today I pulled out that book, and he just kept on a reading and a reading. Sometimes he skipped pages, and after the first two stories, I just let him skip pages and just read whatever he was reading because I figured some reading is better than no reading. I did cleaning the bathroom, laundry. Uh, I have to go check algebra with Sam right now, but like I said, it's 10 after 11. So what I'm going to do is pull out some stuff for lunch. We're not going to eat yet, but I kind of like when I'm going to be warming up uh, leftovers because that's almost always what we have is leftovers. I like to get it out a little bit early if I remember so that it has time to sort of 
just sort of warm up a little bit so we're not trying to uh, microwave everything from ice cold. It just seems to go a little bit better. So I have some brats and hot dogs left over from Saturday supper. It's Monday here today if I never told you that. And then yesterday I did a great big Sunday prep and I made chicken noodle soup yesterday that was specifically, <clears throat> that I specifically earmarked to have for lunches this week. And then I also made a recipe out of the Pioneer Woman cookbook and it's called King Ranch Chicken. That's what it looks like. <laughs> it looks way better than that when I take off the foil. Actually, it looks not, it's not the prettiest but oh my gosh, it was so good. <laughs> That's what I ended up having for supper last night. And I, I baked that right away too yesterday because I thought if I have the chicken noodle soup and any other leftovers from the weekend and then the King Ranch chicken, that is pretty much gonna keep us going for a couple maybe even up to three days of leftover lunches, and that's what we tend to serve around here's leftovers. I even have a little bit of leftovers. Um, I just see a few other things that I can throw out here, so I'm gonna get that stuff set out. I'm gonna go do uh, correct algebra with Sam, and then we're gonna walk down to the mailbox and then also take a walk on the marsh. So I got a lot I wanna make happen here in like 47 minutes. Uh, this is the cranberry bed that we're gonna be planting in about three weeks or so. It just has like a rough level on it right now. It still has to get laser leveled and all of that, but let's go down and check in with the guys. They have been mowing vines this morning and I just wanted to show you what that was all about. So I'm just vlogging a little bit. Okay. Yay! Okay, <laughs> just cut the grape vines. Uh, getting it ready so that we can plant them after this bed gets So we have about a half a ton on the trailer. We need at least a good solid full ton a little more than a ton of people, so just... Okay, Maria. We're gonna uh, put gas right on this afternoon, so we're gonna shift gears and do that, and then tomorrow we'll finish cutting the lines. So about another half ton tomorrow, and we should have it. And this here is just the vines. I was telling you guys about this this morning, or earlier in this video here. So they just go through. Where is the rake? Oh, it's over here. Or the cutter, yeah. Okay, so here is the the uh, cutter, and it just has like these this like sickle blade on it, and he runs it through. This section's already been cut, and you can see where it gets a little more red there. That's the section that hasn't been cut. How far are you gonna cut? Oh, okay. I see. And then after that, after all the vines get cut, we'll get the sprinklers in so that we can actually crop the edges of the center. There won't be any crop this fall where we mowed, but it'll grow back and there'll be a crop there next year already. Okay. It's like a master gardener. <laughs> So then after everything gets mowed, then they have the pitchforks down here. Were you using regular rakes or just pitchforks the whole time? Actually we used pitchforks and kind of got them into rolls, rolls. Them down here. And then we used the excavator to, uh, we'd load the bucket and then we'd swing it up here and put it on the trailer and compact it so you didn't have to carry the vines up the bank. We're kind of combining heavy equipment and hand labor. <laughs> All at the same time here. <laughs> to get the job done. And then you're gonna water these. Well, we're actually gonna run the sprinkler from the house on the lunch, and then uh, set up the sprinkler on to keep it wet, park them behind the shed in the shade. And this will be the, we chose this trailer because we don't have to transfer them. We can water them right on here. They can stay on here until we're ready to plant, and then we just pull this trailer down on the marsh and spark it. <laughs> Oh my gosh. So then we had to load those on the log trailer and then we had to move the drain tile so we could get to the I beams. What is this? That's my homemade pipe rack. Yeah. I built that so I could haul the irrigation pipe from City Point. I see, right. Remember? As Warren uh, drives, there he is down there, as he drives up, 
here to the house to start getting the vines watered and then it's time for lunch. <laughs> my stomach is telling me that for sure. But uh, I wanted to show you guys my rhubarb. Just last week it was like just poking out of the ground and I'm so, so excited. This like really, really means that spring is here and it's May 4th. I mean, typically I've had years where already the last week of April, I'm actually already pulling rhubarb. And it does look like I could probably pull some of this rhubarb if I wanted to make something right now today. Um, I don't think I'm gonna have time to do that today, but that brings me to this. I wanna ask you guys if there's a particular rhubarb recipe that you would like to see, maybe a rhubarb bread, or I don't know, rhubarb coffee cake or rhubarb jam or whatever it might be. If there's something rhubarb that you're like, juice. rhubarb juice, you guys like that, don't you? Mm -hmm. If there's something that you would like to see, I would love to uh, do some rhubarb recipes here. So let me know, you'll rhubarb have to go over. With kiwi in it. What do you want? Rhubarb slush. So you do have to go over to the community tab. There was a few weeks there there was a few weeks there where YouTube had turned my comments back on. Actually, I don't think they turned them on. I think what they did was they forgot to disable them <laughs> because we were in the midst of the whole COVID-19. Everything was kind of like brand new and I think they were just so wrapped up in other things they weren't turning my comments off. But now comments have been turned off again. They disable them for every video by the time it is uploaded. So you guys are gonna have to go over to the community tab and answer that question for me. But, um, here is what is going to go down. So they're just going to get this watered here. Yeah. There's enough of a breeze that it should cascade over over the whole pile. Yeah. Yep. Wide open. There we go. All right. <laughs> the sprinkler's going, Maria. You gonna get your bathing suit on? Oh, no. It's too cold for that. <laughs> it's way too cold for I that. I told Peter one day, we are never doing that again until it becomes summer. Ever. <laughs> what should become summer in like Six weeks, maybe if we're lucky. Oh. What you doing there, Maria? Eating the chicken apples. Oh, they go after it quick, don't they? Yeah, I'll give Blackberry one. He never got one. Uh huh. All right, then the rest of the apple you need to eat, okay? Mm -hmm. No. Blackberry, go! Blackberry. Whoop. I think they're all going to follow you. The blackberry. This is what Carl did. He never got a bite. Here you go, blackberry. Go. Who got it? Golden cookie? Uh, Carl got it again? I'm going to go in there. And Joe's just doing what he loves to do. That's play on the sand pile, right? Uh-huh. That's your, one of your favorite things. Mm-hmm. Oh, 
Oh, right. When we go Yum. to the when we go to the hockey games, mm. popcorn is one dollar. That's exactly right. Yummy. <laughs> it's gonna be a while before we can go to another hockey game, though. Yay! Woohoo! It's gonna be a long time. Yeah! Woohoo! Another thing that makes me so so happy is to see the bleeding heart actually up because that again is such a sign of spring and it's already got a few little uh, hearts starting a few little flowers so I'm so excited about that and it looks like I've got some babies over here well not that that's a dandelion but this one looks like a baby and this one so I guess technically I could dig those up if I had another place to plant those but I don't know where else I would plant them right now. I found a spot and I went out of there. Uh -huh. Well, I shut the door, but then I put this in a low spot and blackberry was right there and he just ate it. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. oh, you finally got so blackberry. Got so I think what I'm gonna do here before going back inside is I see that I have some dead branches here. So I'm just gonna work at cutting those dead branches off here. Uh, getting back last year's uh, still be uh, stems Mom. and uh, um, over here I have some dead branches too so I'm just going to cut that stuff. Before I was really scared of blackberry because he he would run everywhere and now I like him because he's the best to me of them all. Oh that's good. I love him. Okay, so we've been back in for a while. It's actually five to four, and Joseph and Peter and Maria are doing some schoolwork right now. That is not normal in our household to be doing school at that time, at least not if you're a little kid. Maybe if you're a teenager, you might be doing some schoolwork still then, but not for the little kids. But I guess this morning we did some stuff, but then we kind of started um, doing some coloring, some drawing some pictures to send to grandma, and um, I feel like we were doing something else. But um, so, Anyway, we just spent a good portion of the afternoon outside. Now we're back in, like I said, and um, I have them going with some schoolwork, and I'm really, really happy that I did my Sunday prep yesterday because what that means is that really frees me up here for tonight's supper. I put together, and if you watched that last Sunday prep, you saw me put together, if I can do this one-handed here, Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. I put together a um, scallop potatoes and ham, and this is just two of those box mixes from Aldi. It comes with like a little pouch of flavoring, and, uh, and then it comes with the dehydrated potatoes. What I did is I just got it all set up yesterday. What I like to do is to add ham and shredded cheese to it. I'm going to cover this with foil and put it in the oven at, I'm going to have to look at the box, but I think it's about 350. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go 350 degrees and get that preheated, and then I'm going to foil this, put it into the oven for probably 45 minutes or so, take the foil off, see what it's how it's looking, and kind of just go from there. And then for supper with this... I have a muskmelon over here, which feels maybe a little firm yet. I'll have to, let's see, you guys know if you press, where is it? Oh, you're supposed to be able to press here and then sniff it, or press this side maybe, maybe it's the blossom end. All right, well, it smells really good, so I'm gonna cut that up, and then I'll have, and I'll do some strawberries as well, 
And then I'm going to do some vegetables. I think tonight I have some canned uh, green beans. So I'm going to do canned green beans with this. And that is going to be supper here tonight. I would like to make some sort of little treat yet. But it's going to have to be a no-bake treat. Because if I have this going, I really don't want to put like brownies or something in there. So we're going to have to put something together. I just don't know what it's going to be yet. So stay tuned. <laughs> You know, when it's time for a snack, it seems like everybody comes running. But man, when it's supper time, it's like pulling teeth to get everybody to come here. Anyway, tonight for supper, we're just going to be having some green beans. And here is what the scalloped potatoes and ham looks like. I have some cantaloupe over here. And then just, we're, I'm throwing out some bread in case anybody wants some buttered bread. So that's going to be supper here tonight. We got the kids set up on a movie here tonight. They're watching something called Cats. I don't know, it was some movie that Amazon claimed to be a kid and family um, genre movie. So probably not a stellar parenting moment, but uh, we just put that on for them and said, you guys watch. And so then we just wanted to head out. Warren had to set thermometers and then he also had to check on a uh, foot valve situation that he has going so um, yeah I think I mentioned in another video that he had a foot valve that was giving him some grief and so we're back looking at it again I don't know what all is going down with that but anyway that's what's happening Amongst the people it means you're within the group of people. If you're amidst, amidst <laughs> the people, you're I like around, but not necessarily with. <laughs> Does that make sense? I don't know. Why are we even talking about this? <laughs> I don't know. It just popped into my head and I just wondered what was the difference between amongst and amidst. That's the kind of thing we talk about when we are out and about. Warren is... Uh, setting thermometers for the night. I don't even know how many nights it's been freezing, but basically every single night. And so I will link a video that I did. Oh my gosh, it was probably a couple of years ago already where I went out with him a couple times, sort of late into the evening or night and kind of followed him around as he did frost watch in case you guys are interested in that but basically he sets the thermometers what do you have what are you like setting your temperature for tonight there's a floating marker inside the thermometer that marks your lowest temperature so it's still at the lowest temperature from last night so what I'm doing is I'm basically dipping the thermometer on in so that marker slides all the way to the high temperature right now so then as the temperature drops I can always keep track of the coldest temperature and that way I know if it's actually uh sorry why are you laughing at me I don't know <laughs> we're setting thermometers yes we are I'm running on about three hours sleep. <laughs> I've had, I'm, I'm I've, laughing at you so we don't cry. That's why I'm laughing. <laughs> I've had I've had about six hours sleep in the last 48 hours. So everything's funny or nothing is. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> okay, are we heading home now? <laughs> We're so stupid. <laughs> oh, I'm so sleep deprived. It's not even funny. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, everything's hilarious. <sighs> All right. So one more thermometer. One more thermometer. Living the dream. <laughs> well, it's already 49 degrees. So it 49 be... down there. 49 down there, so it'll be freezing in about an hour or so, probably. Uh -huh. Yay!
Well, good morning. <laughs> I did not close out the vlog very well last night at all, and so I wanted to just pop in here this morning and let you guys all know about Frostwatch. So it was extremely windy, and the clouds kind of kept moving in and out, and those two things have a huge effect on the temperature dropping or not dropping. And so Warren was uh, back and forth all night long, uh, going outside, checking, coming back in, that kind of thing, and it actually never did freeze. And this morning we were up and Nick showed up. He actually did some hunting this morning, which was pretty exciting for him. And, and in just 20 short minutes of hunting, he shot this 21 pound turkey. And neat story about the uh, eight point antlers there in the background. Nick had set out his turkey decoy in the morning. And then when he went to pick it up just five feet away, he saw those antlers just kind of like poking out. So he picked that up and brought that home too. So that was a pretty neat find. And with that, I'm going to end today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and we will see you in the next video. Have a fantastic day.